Thank you for the introduction. Um, I must um, uh, make clear that this happened in a little bit of confusion because uh, at the beginning I got an email from Milos that this is going to happen and I was interested just to see it. So I replied in a way that, yeah, it's great. I, I would love to see it and uh, I can bring some magazines and just... Uh, want to be in the audience, but I, I end up here, which is quite uh, quite uh, unexpected for me. Uh, yeah, not, not really unexpected, and I got an email that I will be talking, and uh, but during the last five years, uh, uh, when I was trying to follow uh, Hakim Bey's teaching and, and, and create some autonomous zones, I was mainly crafting and building it, and I've lost most of my speaking capabilities, especially in English. So uh, I'll try to, I'll try to uh, keep uh, uh, the comedian uh, uh, tone set by Martin, and, uh, and uh, but I don't know if it will be possible. So, in the early 90s, uh, as a group of students, we set um, a strange publishing house in 1993, 1992, 1993, <clears throat> uh, where we've been publishing strange books and magazines. At that time, it was called Divus, the magazine, and in 97, uh, a couple of editors um, came to Divas and we we decided to have a real critical magazine called Umnilets. And uh, we've heard rumors that there's somewhere in the fields there's some hermit. But and we were watching it from a distance because for us it was like something like a, a alchemical hut uh, from Fulkanelli's books. And uh, also we were young students without an experience, so sometimes we misinterpret or uh, didn't understand really clearly what's going on there. Uh, also, we were trying to get as much knowledge from uh, Milos as possible, and uh, he was he was very helpful. He was uh, he was the first one who introduced us Hakim Bey. And first, what we did, we absolutely fucked up the translation because we sometimes didn't understand the, um, the real meaning, and uh, Milos was then laughing at us. And. Um, that's why um, uh, I brought also old copies. It's really rare. It's from 1997, 8 and 9 copies of the magazine. Uh, you can flip through. You can, you can have it. Uh, there's another uh, pile for the museum. And uh, there's also few copies from year 2000, 2005, 2007. And then the last issue from 2016, where we've been still able to publish something. And uh, there is one copy which is still in a computer and never been published. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 So, um, before I forget, I, I, um, I want to react to, to your remark about uh, uh, the uh, about me that I'm uh, still keeping uh, doing it uh, yeah the question is always on what costs yeah so it's very difficult to sometimes to uh, to to remember the ruins uh, behind me. So, um, until the year 2000, the 90s, it was really uh, 
a time of uh, enthusiasm, naivety, and uh, illusions. Uh, you sent us the text where you, in the middle, you're saying like, yeah, it was a, sadly, you, you're remarking that it's, it was a naivety and it failed because, because it was naivety. But I think naivety is one of the, like, the, the biggest force and uh, illusions as well. So uh, with, without having them, I, I would, I would pro probably uh, not be able to do anything. And um, back to the topic. Around 2000, when the 90s and the publishing house grew too much, we, were, we started to be too international. Uh, we were publishing books and magazines in many languages and we kept doing it for almost 15, 16 years from year 2000 until 2016. Um, to keep going it, we, we were using like capitalist tools uh, to cover the independent, uh, independent and uh, almost like crazy activities. Like we were setting companies around the world and were, when it bankrupt, we ran away and uh, we were traveling on fake documents. Uh, we were using uh, fake plates on the cars sometimes to cross uh, the borders. Uh, it was really, really wild. And uh, as it was too much, we were we were having so many places where we were, where we had uh, like edition, uh, editorials, like where we were and storages, and where we do exhibitions. We were we opened uh, one center in London, another one we had in Prague, in Berlin as well. And uh, yeah, it was really difficult to. Uh, uh, to cover the costs. And we were successful in in a bit of uh, public funding, but not, not enough, of course, yeah, because uh, the concepts of many of these projects uh, was, weren't possible to cover from, from public funds because they were too strange. And uh, in the year 2016, uh, we realized that we can't carry on uh, without having a real autonomous zone, which is our own zone, which is not someone else's zone, which is not someone else's building or uh, someone else's field. and. Uh, because we will be always kicked out when we are not necessary anymore, or when we when we don't have enough money for for the rent and and uh, and production. So we've decided that we are going to buy our own ruin and uh, and set the place to live and work. So before before we bought anything, we tried to uh, we tried a test zone uh, near Prague. Uh, there is a, there is a former paper mill in uh, in uh, Vrany nad Vltavou. Uh, that paper mill we occupied for like four years, not more, I think. Uh, we moved all the production there. We had a printing house, we had the gallery, cafe, everything, and for four years we were testing if we are able to uh, to manage such a, such a monster. And then, of course, uh, 
there was a time to leave because uh, the owner also wants to hire, wants to rise the rent and is not anymore uh, interested in art activities. So uh, I was traveling around uh, our country and uh, I was looking for abandoned ruin and uh, finally I find one. That's that's the outcome. We are uh, working on it um, manually <laughs> for five years. And uh, right now it's possible to live there. We've got the printing house, we've got a gallery, we've got uh, studios for artists. And uh, nice garden um, I think uh, the most interesting is the link uh, the, the second link with uh, where is um, where you can see how it is built uh, you can go go down yeah open your double button text uh, yeah and you can flip just click on one and you can with the arrows you can go Yeah, that's that's the area, and that's the history. And you can you can go quickly. Don't worry. There's nothing really uh, uh, nothing really important on on certain image. You can just see the. Or you can click on one and and go through the through the gallery with the arrows or with the, it, on the edge of the image. Yeah, there's the arrow. Yeah, that's it. It's a former German factory for making treads. No, no, no. It's a, it, it's on it's on the border. It's uh, it's near German border in Krasna Lipa in Kiev, Czech Switzerland. It, there's a border. There's a border with uh, Poland and Germany. So. We can always run away to another country. So, just make it short. This was, in fact, inspired by uh, Milos and his introduction to Hakim Bey's ideas. Although we fucked up the, uh, the translation and didn't understand it well, the the ideas grown inside us and uh, although Milos is saying he failed in fact you we inherited this so you are part of it yeah I must say like after after five years of building, um, um, there's not enough uh, like energy in me to create any any program for it. So um, <laughs> honestly, <laughs> if you have any idea, like, just just bring it. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. The train is tomorrow, so <laughs> you can join us. Well, uh, how many minutes I did already? Three. Three. <laughs> yes, thank you. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Okay. So, uh, so at the end, I want to thank to uh, Milos for inspiration for invitation.